Hey, how's it going? Let's talk about the ERMI test. Most of you who are on this page know what the ERMI test is, and I want to give a little bit of clarity so that your score does not grip your emotions or your mentality uh, about the health of your home and the health of your family. It's one piece of the puzzle, and let's talk about um, some of the nuances around it, uh, how the scoring system was developed, and uh, where it belongs in the process of investigating your home. Um, so real quick, the ERMI is the Environmental Relative Moldiness Index that was developed by the EPA uh, in 2006 on about 1,100 homes or so. Okay, so first of all, everybody's ERMI average that is in the ERMI score, which we'll talk about later, is all based off of the averages that they got a long time ago in 2006 and in only 1,100 homes, which is the size of a normal subdivision in America. So all of your ERMI uh, results are compared to th those data points back then. Uh, they were done via a vacuum cartridge sample in two different areas, only two areas of the home. Literally the EPA, how they did it was took tape and put it on the ground, maybe three by five square or so, and vacuumed the dust under there in two different spots of the home. Maybe it was under a couch, uh, maybe it was you know upstairs like under a bed or so. Um, that's how they developed um, the collection method, and that was how the test was administered. Well, that was, that was the original way, and now our current way that maybe you guys are more familiar with is this Swiffer cloth that is collected on multiple surfaces throughout the home. Okay, so that's definitely a different way it's being administered. You can still do the vacuum one uh, these days, but the most common that everyday homeowners nationwide are using is this Swiffer cloth on multiple surfaces in the home. So to me, that's not apples to apples in the comparative uh, process between how it's administered now and then where our averages came from. It's very, very important. And here's a nuance for some of you who do uh, blood samples or read blood tests if you're a practitioner, is that let's say there's a level in your body that the average is between three and 10. Well, what are we being compared to? Are we being compared to people our age, our same lifestyle, our demographic? I mean, there's a lot of different factors on what average is. And we have to ask that first question if we wanna really wisely go about this is really asking where did these averages come from? So when you see a little star next to your ERMI that says tenfold above the average or two stars, you know, however many fold above the average, we gotta know what average or what normal even means. And unfortunately, our averages came from these a long time ago and our ERMI score is that algorithm based on that that develops all the you know scores that we see. And what it says on the ERMI test that you'll get back is that if you have a score of four or above that you should either remediate or leave the home or whatever it may be. And it's very, very rare to have an army below four. I'll just tell you that from the hundreds and hundreds I've, I've done and seen. So um, I guess let me backtrack real quick. It is a dust collection sample only, which like we talked about in previous videos is only one way to assess the health of the home. The visual inspection being most important, air and swab samples being other ways to fill in the gaps on this. And why they chose the 36 mold species here is because these mold species, most of them are mycotoxin producing. So this is an effective way to find maybe more hazardous mold types potentially that are just housed in your innocent looking household dust. And that's where we got the 36. Uh, that being said, I'll say that a mold type called Aspergillus, which you may have heard of, has over 300 species by itself in that family of molds. Well, the ERMI is really only collecting 36 species. So this you know, microscopic kingdom here has millions and millions of species. Um, so 36 already is, is very, very small. I just want you guys to have an understanding, which is why I'm making this video, of the differences between the original test, how it was taken, where you're getting your ERMI averages from, and then now the current uh, you know, administra administration that uh, you're doing and where um, our averages are not necessarily apples to apples comparison. So what do we do with an ERMI? Well, to me, the interpretation factors are most important. Just like in your blood test, if you have someone who really, really knows your lifestyle and knows how to read your blood test, they will find the nuances um, even within your average ranges and be able to give you some good answers. And I've uh, really learned a lot from peeking into different uh, uh, blood interpretations from from other people and it's it's very fascinating and is very important also when interpreting lab results in the home uh, The interpretation factors is 
to me, the most important is the types, the amounts of those types, and the different conditions in which the, uh, the test was taken. So the types would be, you know, which are the most toxigenic showing up, uh, how much and, and those different amounts. What are the overall concentrations of them? Are there many, many mold types of the 36 that are in the hundreds and the thousands? It's a higher ERMI. Um, and then the conditions taken. Where were you collecting dust? That's important for the interpreter to know. Uh, when was it taken? You know, is this someone else's dust that you're collecting, you know, before you're about to go rent or buy in a home? I want to know that as well. Did you collect dust from everywhere in the house or was it just on one floor? That's important to know. You know, why are we doing this test? What are we looking to find out? And then the most important part of it all is the current state of the home and the history of the home. Because in order to make sense of the ERMI score, we need those other factors. We need to really do the investigation because I've seen some ERMIs that are fairly low. Like, hey, this looks at, at the surface very, very good. But when we go to cover the bases of, hey, check the current state of the house and you know, tell me about the history a little bit more, uh, we can figure out that maybe the ERMI did not catch everything. There can be still a lot of surface area in the home that is contaminated and the ERMI didn't happen to pick it up. Why? Because even if you do collect multiple surfaces in the home, maybe 10, some people collect way more, but I know the instructions say about 10. If you collect 10 surfaces of the home, that's 10 surfaces of dust when your house has so much more square footage that you could have collected dust on. So there's a lot that we miss just in the collection way uh, or method there. And we don't know what if we collected, you know, a different area and the score would be different. This is this is the variables that uh, we need to to be aware of as we're doing it. Um, so I'm interpreting the types, the amounts, the conditions it was taken, and then if I really want to give a game plan on what to do, uh, I really need to know a lot more about the state of the home uh, because the ERMI all by itself does not tell us too much. Um, is it a still a great place to start? Yes, it can be. Uh, we can really see what are we being exposed to in our innocent looking household dust throughout the house. Is it species or types that are more mycotoxin producing? And it's a good starting point uh, before we do what I recommend to everybody, whether you have a high ERMI or a low ERMI, I always recommend you must investigate further in order for us to make some sense uh, of these scores. So I hope this helps a little bit. Uh, like I said, take a little bit of that uh, stress of this need for certainty that the ERMI unfortunately cannot give us. No test can. I mean, I can do a whole talk on the variances with uh, with air testing and why you know that can be very flawed too, and why one or two air samples in different places of the home shouldn't be giving you know too much credit to that either. The visual inspection, the knowledge of the home, state of the home, symptoms of the people in the home, and all these other factors I've spoken about in other videos is the most important part when you're trying to really find mold so that we can solve it and go to our goal, which is to maintain and move on with life. Uh, with a more mold safe uh, home and healthy lifestyle. So hope this helps a bit. Let me know your questions on this. And if you need help with the interpretation and investigation side uh, of your home, you can book with me one-on-one. -on -one. Those links are in my link tree in my bio, and we'll see you next time.